Ethiopia is situated in the Horn of Africa and was previously known as Abyssinia. It is bordered by Sudan in the west, Kenya in the south, Eritrea in the north, Djibouti and Somaliland in the east. Ethiopia, after Nigeria, has the second largest population in Africa at 80 plus million people. Unique among African countries, the ancient Ethiopian monarchy maintained its freedom from colonial rule with the exception of a short-lived occupation by the Italians from 1936 to 41. In 1974, a military junta, the Derg, deposed Emperor Haile Selassie, who had ruled since 1930, and established a socialist state. Torn by bloody coups, uprisings, wide-scale drought, and a massive refugee problem, the regime was finally toppled in 1991 by a coalition of rebel forces, the Ethiopian People's Revolutionary Democratic Front. A constitution was adopted in 1994, and Ethiopia's first elections were held in 1995, the year after Nelson Mandela was elected. Ethiopia's GDP is around 25 billion USD per annum. The economy is dominated by agriculture, specifically coffee and jat, and most farmers are operated as subsistence farmers. Under Ethiopia's constitution, the state owns all land and provides long-term leases to the tenants. This system has hampered growth as entrepreneurs are unable to use land as collateral for loans. Addis Ababa, New Flower, is the capital city with a population of 4 to 5 million people. There are a further 20 or so second tier cities with populations between 500,000 and 1 million people. The rest live in rural towns and villages. The infrastructure is poor and in most outlying rural locations non-existent. ምንሻን ምንጭ ሆራ መሆኑ ንዛይ ከብቶ ጭጣጣሉ ሲጣጡት ይፈላዋ ነው ሙቆዋ ነው በዚህ ምክንያት ገብቶ ለከብቶ ጭጥሩ ነው ሆራ ይባላል ብሎ ሲማጣለት ነው ህዝቡ ከዛ ወደዛ አወቀ እሄ መዳኒት ነው አልና ጽቀማስ ወድ ውስጥ ማም ያለው ብሎ አወጣ መዳኒት ሆነ ህዝቡ ከዛ ወደዛ አወቀ እሄ መዳኒት ነው አልና መልቀም ጀመሩ ወጣት ጀመሩ ኮዳ ይለም ምን ይለም ጣርሙስ ይለም በቅል ይዞጋባል ወይ ያገሩ ከዚህ ጥቁር እንጨት ይدرس ከዚህ ያገር ወደ ሌላ ሀገር ይዞ ይዳል እንግዲህ ድሮ ሰዎች ከተለያየ ቦታ ደክሙ በእግራቸው በበቅሎ መጥቶ እስከ ሳምንት እስከ 15 ቀን እዚህ መጥቶ ተጥቶ ሲገቡ ዛሬ በየቤታችን ቁጭ ብለ ምንም ቢሆን ክርስቲና ምሆን ለካሰርግ ምሆን ከምን ምሆን አይቀር እቺ አምቦሃው የተፈጠሩ ሀብት ናት የተፈጠሩ ሀብት ምንም ወንዚ ሌላ ወንዚ ሳይቀላቀል ነው ከምን ሹርኮ ከድንጋይ ሞታ ምን አፈራ ያገኝ ምንም የለም ምርጥ ሆነ ሞታ ከጉርፍ ከመናምን የሚቀላቀል ቆሻሽ ያለው ስለዚህ ንጹህ ሆነ ሞታ ከድንጋይ ውስጥ ነው ሞታ ተክላላ ኢትዮጵያ ዘወራው ነው የምትጠቀመው አምቦዋ ስርጭት ብዙ ነው አምቦዋ አምቦዋ እዚ ተወለደ እንጂ አይማ ያቀው ነገር ይለም 
ያን ቦት ወለደ እንጂ ያራቀ ወቃ ገሬ ለም ጥባን ስሙ ተሻግሯል በየቦታ የወይን ግንድናት አንቦሃ የወይን ግንድ ብዙ ስለሚታፈራ እሷ የወይን ግንድናት እናት ናት The Ambo business was founded in the early 1930s and located in the town of Ambo, 130 kilometers from Addis Ababa. Originally known as Listafari Sharo, the business was expropriated by the government following the coup d'etat which occurred in December 1961. In 1970, the factory was relocated to Sankale, 5 kilometers west of Ambo town. At this time, the capital employed was 500,000 USD. Total employees numbered 522 and the production capacity of the new plant was 270,000 hectoliters. In 1989, the business was expanded by an Italian engineering company, Rivi Engineering, and the new plant was completed in April 1993. The business now had a capital employed of 2 million US dollars. Total employees numbered 522 and the production capacity of the new plant was 270,000 hectoliters. In 2009, the business was privatized and SAB together with a prominent Ethiopian business entrepreneur, Tedros Ashenafi, purchased just over 70% of the business. We effectively took over management in early 2009, adopting over 750 employees. The business at the time was selling 270,000 hectoliters and making below 1 million USD profit per year. The place was a mess. No systems, measures, processes or communication. Housekeeping standards were non-existent. Production quantities of best guess and losses unknown. The entire system was paper driven with archive records on bits of paper going back to the 1950s. The only management info available other than the annual financial results which were done by government auditors at year end was daily cash deposited into the bank account. The business was not losing money and as long as they continued to employ people no one asked too many questions. The business was starved of investment and management focus. The plant was still operating although it was obvious that maintenance and housekeeping had been totally neglected. This led us to believe that many of the employees were reasonably well skilled and able to make a plan under difficult circumstances. A good start. The first 100 days was predominantly spent getting to grips with key issues, whilst at the same time setting up the platform for future growth. We adopted a typical SAB approach, which was to analyze all aspects of the business in detail and then agree on priorities. We set up a basic plan with some initial standards and measurements, the focus being on production and distribution. Getting to understand the system and how it worked was key, specifically the people side of things. Initial meetings with both management and the union were tense as all parties were anticipating wide-scale layoffs and retrenchments as it was obvious that the existing headcounts were excessive. We decided not to follow this route. As an alternative strategy to address the issue, we 1 offered early retirement to those over 55 years, 2 paid up all temp and casual employment, 3 conducted a re-engineering project which was driven by the employees themselves, 4 created an employee pool into which all excess employees were seconded. The pool employees were then used on a rotational basis to reduce the excessive leave days which had accumulated over the years. The average number of leave days due per employee was over 90 days. This strategy built a high level of trust and credibility and facilitated other changes to work practices including a new grading scale and remuneration system which was based on skill and knowledge versus loyalty and length of service. When people realized that they were not going to be fired and that their jobs and future in Ambo was secure, they became receptive to new operating standards and methods, which translated into improved efficiencies, controls, and ultimately lower costs. Over time, which was a significant source of income, for example, has reduced from 50% to less than 15% in the last year. 
Another important initiative was transferring ownership of the business to the employees. This was in essence driven by a housekeeping initiative and incentive scheme, which gave the employees a sense that this was their business and they needed to look after it. Monthly housekeeping tours and feedback sessions on performance versus target also created interest and passion for the business. Our investment in the business was also viewed as water onto a dying plant. This included investment in computer systems and email communications, investment in refurbishment and maintenance of the old plant, investment in new plant capacity, investment in people's specifically training and skill upgrading. All this investment together with a trusted and credible management team added to the sense that the future at AMBO was bright. It also ensured that we had made the right impression with our local partner and the government, which was important given that our aspirations were ultimately to acquire a beer business. Not everything to date has however been perfect. The registration and transfer of the state-owned business was extremely time-consuming and tedious as every nut and bolt needed to be checked and physically handed over. Opening of foreign bank accounts and transferring of funds in and out of the country remains difficult. Rules and regulations regarding imports and exports are ever-changing depending on which staff members are on duty. Electricity supply is inadequate and totally unreliable. Laws governing industrial relations are applied differently depending on the judge of the day. Looking back, there is a number of things we would have done differently. These include aspects related to the refurbishment, operations and investment. We may have been too eager to improve the current operation rather than to just live with it until the new capacity investment was available. We spent a lot of time, effort and money maintaining and improving the business as it was not what it was going to be. For example, we introduced a container sorting process to try and differentiate better quality bottles. This laborious exercise was a total waste of time, given that many of the bottles did not fit the crate properly and labels were damaged and or removed entirely as you force fit the bottle into the crate. We also refurbished both of the existing pack lines rather than just one. We cleaned and polished the old site only to have it bulldozed down a few months later when the new project started. We invested in Crohn's equipment where Mark said we should buy Chinese. Looking ahead, our immediate plans are to introduce a refurbished 500ml RGB pack. This will include a new embossed 475ml bottle, label and crown. The label is very similar. In fact, the change has already been made quietly prior to the new embossed bottle introduction. This new RGB pack will be followed by the launch of 330 and 750 milliliter glass in our PET range. Furthermore, we plan to introduce new products including Ambolite, light being less mineralization and carbonation levels, and a range of flavored waters called Ambo End. The new products will only be available in PET as we plan to maintain AMBO original in glass. It's been quite a journey to date, however, we have tremendous faith in our brand and look forward to penetrating your markets in the near future. Trust you enjoyed this film clip. Regards from Ethiopia and the AMBO team.